Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is another lecture of this graph theory series. And in this lecture, we are going to study about cycle detection using DFS. So let's get into the lecture. So this is the problem statement. You are given a graph, and you have to find whether the given graph contains a cycle or not. So if we see an example, then this graph contains no cycle. While this graph contains a cycle which we can see here, a cycle between node 2, 3 and 4. The speciality or property of cycle is that it provides alternate ways, alternate path to go from one node to another. For example, take, take an example of this graph. If you find how many ways are there to reach to node 3 from node 1, there is only single way. You have to go from 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3. Same goes for any, sorry, same goes for any two node, any pair of node in this graph. If you choose any pair, then there exists a unique path between those two nodes. Uh, for example, node 3 and 4. The path uh, from 3 to 4 or 4 to 3 is 3 to 4 or 4 to 3. There is no alternate way. But when there exists a a cycle in the graph then it creates alternate ways to go from one node to another take an example of 1 and 4 there is a path from 1 2 and 4 this is a single path and then there exists another path that goes like 1 2 3 and 4 to reach 4 from node 1 there are two ways now if there wasn't any cycle let's say we remove this edge then there would be a unique path from node 1 to node 4 so this is a property of a tree that in a tree for each pair of nodes there exists a unique path while if the graph contains a cycle this is not the case anymore so let's look at some terminologies and then we will start uh, and see how we can find whether the graph contains cycle or not using dfs so the first one is parent uh, so this node, node 5, is currently the function on which DFS is being performed and node 4 has made a DFS call to node 5. So you were at node 4 and then you made a DFS call to node 5. Since this node made a DFS call to node 5, hence this is the parent of node 5. So if node 2 makes a DFS call to node 4, then node 2 becomes parent of 4. And the other thing is back edge. So suppose we made a DFS call to 1 and then 1 made a DFS call to 2, 2 made a DFS call to 3, in turn 3 made a DFS call to 4. Now you see this edge, this is edge connects node 4 to one of its ancestor which is not its parent. Any edge that connects a node to its ancestor which is not its parent that edge is called the back edge and if you find any back edge in the given graph that indicates the presence of a cycle let's see how so to reach node 4 uh, let's take an example of this to reach node 4 from 2 you ha already have a path because you made a dfs call and then you reached node 4 using its parent so there exists a path from node 2 to node 4 which doesn't include this edge so there is a path from 2 to 4 which doesn't include this edge because you reached node 4 without using this edge you reach node 4 via its parent which is 3 but if you include this edge then there exists another path from its ancestor to node 4 directly which indicates that there are more than one path from two uh, in this pair of node and hence it indicates the presence of a cycle so all we have to look for are the back edges so in the given graph if there exists a back edge then the graph contains cycle so all we have to do is we whenever we are making a dfs call we would pass an extra argument that is the parent so in the adjacency list of four there are three edges first edge connects three and four and that is visited visited node indicates the parent or ancestor 
so since 3 2 1 all are visited all are ancestor of 4 for now and since node 3 is also visited but this edge is not back edge because it doesn't connect node 4 to its uh, ancestor which is not its parent it directly connects node 4 to its parent so if there is a node which connects node 4 to or any node to its parent that edge would not be considered as back edge so this edge is not a uh, back edge because it connects node 4 to its parent that is why in the dfs call we also need to pass the parent node so we can check in the dfs function that whether the visited node is uh, its parent or not so since this edge connects node 4 to its parent it is not a back edge then in the adjacency list of 4 there is 2 as well and 2 is also visited so we would look whether 2 is parent of 4 or not but this time 2 is not the parent of 4 and hence it have to be its it have to be uh, ancestor of 4 and hence it indicates the presence of back edge and that is why we would know that yes the graph contains a cycle so this was all the theory part let's take an example and make things even clearer so this is the graph and this is the visited array to indicate which node has been visited or not and it would also tell whether the graph is uh, whether the current node is ancestor or not this is the adjacency list and this is the stack so in in, from the main function we made a dfs call to node 1 that is why in the stack there is dfs1 and we also pass parent of node 1 since in the dfs call now we are passing two things node number and the parent of it and since this is the root for our case because in the main function we are making a dfs call to node 1 so node 1 is root and since there are no parent of any root so we would simply pass minus 1 in the adjacency list of 1 there is 2 and 2 is not visited so we would make a dfs call to node 2 and as a parent of node 2 we would pass node 1 because node 1 is making a dfs call to node 2 so node as soon as we reach node 2 we make it visited and and we have passed 1 as its parent in the adjacency list of 2 we have 1 and 1 is already visited so we have to check whether this edge is back edge or not for that we have to check whether this edge connects it to node uh, we have to check whether this edge connects node 2 to its parent or not for that we would check whether 1 is its parent or not and as 1 is its parent hence this is not a back edge so we would continue we would move to node 3 and since node 3 is not visited we would make a dfs call to node 3 and pass 2 as parent in the adjacency list of node 3 we have 2 and 2 is already visited so we would check whether this is back edge or not and since parent of 3 is equals to 2 and hence uh, node 2 is parent of 3 and this cannot be a back edge and hence we would continue so we would come at 4 and we would see that node 4 is not vivid visited so we would make a dfs call to node 4 passing 3 as its parent in the adjacency list of node 4 we have 3 and since 3 is visited so we will check whether 3 is its parent or not and since 3 is its parent so it cannot be a back edge so we would move on we would go to 2 and since 2 is also visited we would check whether 2 is force parent or not since 2 is not force parent hence this edge is back edge and hence this indicates the presence of a cycle as you can see note 2 is not the parent of node 4 hence it have to be a back edge and hence this indicates the presence of a cycle and hence we would return true from here and we would not continue its ex execution in spite we would return instead we would return one that would indicate that yes we have found the cycle as soon as node 3 re receives true it would return to its parent and then that would return its parent and this node 1 would return in the main function that yes we have found a cycle and this is the implementation of cycle detection using dfs so we have a function dfs that takes two argument node and the parent of the current node and it returns bool value true if the graph contains 
cycle and false otherwise as soon as we reach this this node we would make it visit it and then in the adjacency list of this node we would see whether the given given node or whether the node in the adjacency list of current node is visited or not if it is not visited we would make a dfs call to this child sending the current node as parent and if it returns true which indicates that the graph contains a cycle and hence instead of continuing our execution we would return true from here if the child that is the node is not visited then we would check whether it is equal to parent or not if this is not parent then it have to be an a back edge the current edge have to be a back edge and hence we would return true from here otherwise if the complete execution of this portion executes successfully then we would return false indicating that yep we have found no back edge hence the graph doesn't contain any cycle so this is the code part and i hope you have guy you guys have understood this algorithm or if not just go through some articles or watch the video again in the next video we are we would be maybe taking one or two example problems and then implementing this algorithm to solve those problems so thank you guys for watching and keep coding thank you